What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Greg Campy Show. We are live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. I think it's the role of voice of the Golden Grizzlies. Of course, he is the coach, Greg Campy. Camp, how are you? Yeah, it would have been a lot better if we'd won Saturday. I agree. But, you know, I was thinking driving over here that I, there's no shame in, in that game and that, you know, they have to, they're a very good team. Maybe one through five, the most talented team uh, in the league. And they had an unbelievable night. I mean, they had a 28% three-point shooter start the game five for five from the three. They had another, and he ended up five for six. They had another guy go seven for 10. Uh, you know, 12, 12 of uh, 16 from the three from two guys is, and, you know, you're going to win a lot of games doing that. And, and they, they, you know, made them a big, big times. Uh, and the thing I like most about it is that, you know, we battled and we never gave up and we battled ourselves back into the game. And we made, there were two key plays during our run that I think ended up costing us winning the game. And, it, and like I told the team after the game, that not criticizing any of the players that might have taken that shot or that. You just, you don't lose, you learn. And you had to learn from what we did. But we had a three-on-one in the middle of that run where we got a steal and we didn't score. Jalen didn't come to a two-footed stop in transition and that kid blocked it. And then our other guys didn't follow the play. You know, you've got to believe in that situation that he could miss. And you can't let a one defender block a shot and get the rebound also. And that, that really hurt us. We overcame it. Then we scored. We got another stop. We scored. We got another stop and a steal. Cut a 17-point lead to four with nine minutes to go. And we threw the ball up in the corner right in front of my bench and, uh, and fired a transition three. And the reason, <coughs> the reason from a coaching standpoint that that's not a good shot is, you know, Rocket had just made a three, and I know he was feeling it, and I know that, you know, the crowd was, I mean, the crowd was unbelievable. That, during that stretch back in the game was one of the loudest I've ever heard of crowds. I mean, it was for not even being a full house. And we, had, we had great crowds and full houses, and we always preached to our recruits how loud it is in our place, but it was unbelievably loud at the time. And they were panicking. They were, I mean, they turned it over 21 times. They were in an absolute panic. They were struggling just to catch the ball. And we have the, when, when you're in that situation, the other team's really never going to score unless a great player on the other team makes a play or you do something. I don't want to use the word stupid, but you do something that allows them to score a bad foul, bad call by an official, uh, a turnover at an inopportune time when you've got all the momentum. And we came down and fired a one pass transition three that we had no chance of rebounding when we had been scoring on every possession, getting the ball to Trey, kickouts, you know, Rockets, Rockets three was on a playoff out of a sideline. The ball had gone out of bounds with seven seconds on the shot clock and we ran a play and he, he made it, you know, we were scoring in the offense. We were scoring through transition turnovers at the rim and we took a one shot three and the worst three you can take in that situation from a coaching standpoint is the corner three. Because where does that usually go? Free throw line. It it transits. It hits hard and goes to the free throw line. And you're starting their fast break on the run, and they went down. And they didn't. We had like seven straight stops, and they scored. And that ended that streak. And it's it then they got it up to eight, and then it stayed at you know six, eight, six, nine, six, nine, and then with about four minutes to go. Uh, that kid hit another three, and they made a little run, and it was over. And our window of opportunity for winning that game was right there. You know, we come down, we score there, we get it to two. 
who knows when they're going to score. So those two plays, I think, were the difference. And again, you learn from it. And if we learn and we're in that situation again, which I hope we are, you know, I hope nobody goes. I mean, they were, they threw up two threes in the last minute of the game, uh, you know, with the shot clock going down. If you don't count those two threes, they were 14 to 24 from the three. And our defense going into that game was three point defense was 28%. And we gave up 56. It's a one-off, you know. It, it's it's going to happen. It, it, it may happen again during the year. It happens one or two times a year. Um, I say it every year. Every team in the country will play three or four games way above their ability. They'll play three or four games way below their ability. And it just happened. And in our league right now, if you look at our league, it is going to be a dogfight every night. I mean, Robert Morris was a really good team there in ninth place. And, you know, we, we struck two dynamic players, right? right? I mean, actually three, we were yeah. fortunate that the one kid missed a lot of shots. I mean, he was one for nine from the three, but that's the difference in college basketball. He was one for nine on Thursday night and a 28% shooter was five for five. You know, I mean, it's just the game. It's, it's not it's, linear, right? You you know, know. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can say what we want, but in, in the, in the big picture, look at what happened this week in the SEC. Tennessee beats South Carolina by 41. South Carolina goes to Kentucky and beats them. Kentucky goes to Tennessee and beats Tennessee. I mean, it's just, it's college basketball transfer portal era. And you got, I mean, Youngstown State has four players on their team that are in their sixth year of college basketball. It's just a diff. I mean, those guys are pros. Yeah, pension, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but those... You know, I mean, normally, if it wasn't for COVID and it wasn't all this stuff, those guys would be playing professionally. And that's why you're seeing the, the swings in that in college basketball. Again, just in the Horizon League, we are just coming. This week is the halfway point of the regular season in league play. 20 games, we've all played eight. And through eight games, not a team in our league has won all their home games. And that is unheard of. You know, absolutely unheard of. I mean, just it. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> it's unbelievable that all eleven teams have lost at home. And that's every night in this league. You don't know who's going to win. You're not. You're not going to be able to predict it. And uh, we we just really, as fans and as players and as coaches, we have to the, the the one at a time. You know, get ready for the next game. IUPUI is going to beat somebody. They're going to, and we just can't make, we got to make sure it's not us. And we've just got, we can't, oh, we won by three, you know, everybody else won by 28 or something like that. They're going to beat somebody. And it, it, we just got to get out of there Thursday with a win. And if we do, everything in the world's good again. We're game out of first place and we play, and we, we hold our own destiny in our hands. And, you know, on December 4th, if, you know, that radio show we had that Monday night, I don't think there's anybody in here that thought that eight games into the league season, we'd be sitting here saying we hold our destiny in our hands. So, um, but it moves fast, Ken. And this, this game this year, it's just crazy. I mean, just crazy. Uh, and then, you know, Detroit has kind of really struggled. Uh, we got them Monday night, but I'm understanding of their whole team's going to play on Monday night for the first time this year. And of course, we're the 10th game. You know, so we couldn't have played them in the first or third game. You know, when right. they when they're missing Liddell and they're missing Stone and things like that, we're going to have to play their whole team. And you know, that's that's the small differences that there are out there right now. And that's why you got to stay focused. You got to play them one at a time, and uh, you got to make plays. And our, our kids are making plays. I mean, the the, the uh, Robert Morris came on Thursday night. You know, again, we had some call go against us. You know, a kid flat out traveled, threw the ball out to the top of the key. Guy makes a tough three and we follow him and they get a four. They're down two with a minute to go in the game and they get a four point plug. After the kid, I don't know how anybody, and I mean, you heard everybody in the stadium go, what? You know, I mean, yeah. 3,000 people saw it. How did that kid get from that block to the other side of the block and throw the ball out on uh, out to the top of the key? But it got missed, and it's it's just the breaks. But our guys overcame that again. 
you know, we came down and, and threw it into Trey. He made a butt basket. We got to stop. Threw it into Trey. Made two free throws. We got to stop. Made two more free throws. We win the game. So the team that's going to win the most close games, the team that's going to overcome the adversity, the team that can weather the storm is going to be the team that wins this thing. And you get involved in tonight's show. Remember, send us a tweet with the hashtag Ask Campy. We got those flying in here tonight. That'll be a long segment, by the way, Cam. So you'll have to uh, you'll have to show some restraint tonight. You know? I'll try and speak quickly. And, and you know, I'll coach you. All uh, right. We've got a special guest tonight too, uh, Brian Borchard. Um And hopefully, somebody in here remembers that name. Besides, it. his daughter's here too. So, <laughs> um, but Brian played for me in the ni- early nineties, ninety-two to ninety-five. And his daughter came to a, a soccer camp today, and he brought her here from Ohio. And he got a chance to see the change in our campus and, and how different things are today than when he played. And I, you know, he made a joke to me. He goes, "I should go on your show." And I go, "You're damn right, you should. You're on it." So you know, because you go. I, I, I'm gonna, I, he's going to have some stories for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. So. And uh, camp, it, it's going to be it's going to be tough to keep this into one segment too, because there's a lot of stuff. I want to talk to him about and stuff like that, questions about you, and as you said, stories. And remember, too, he played when Mike Malone was on your staff, who coaches the Denver Nuggets, and yeah. coached the All Star game. And yeah, but Brian didn't like me a whole lot when he was here. Yeah, I'm surprised he still likes me now. But uh, and we'll talk about that. <laughs> the thing about Brian is he got the coach. Yeah. So he he actually he coached his first head coaching job. He had a player that Michigan recruited. He told me a story today that. Um, you know, he had been the head coach for two weeks, and Duke called him. And he went to the player and said, who was going to commit to Michigan, and, and asked him, well, do you want to talk to Duke? And the player said no. So the first recruiting call that Brian ever had to make was to tell Duke we're not interested. And there aren't many coaches in this world that could say <laughs> that, right? Uh, life moves fast, Camp, as, as I said. Uh, but, Camp, real quick, too, and, and as we, you brought that up where you're going on the road here, uh, like we're we're gonna do four more road games in a row, which has seemed to be the uh, the theme of the season. But camp, once you get through that Robert Morris game, uh, you guys will get the opportunity to close hard. You'll have six of the last eight at the arena. And camp, I mean, look at this look at this place here tonight. There's not a seat to be had here at RJ's. Uh, you talked about how loud the crowd was and everything like that. These fans here, camp, these Golden Grizzlies fans, they're hungry, man, and they're motivated. Yeah, I think that we're really for fun. more than season for us yeah. too. Yeah. But I think we're a really fun team to watch. We've got some really, really talented players. And, you know, I think we've got really good kids too, and I think that has something to do with it. Um, I was with Brian. We went. I went with him into the uh, soccer dome to watch his daughter play, and then bring him here. And as I was walking out of the dome, three women soccer players went walking by and yelled at me and said, "We can't wait for the next one." You know, it. It's. Uh, you know, I just think it's an exciting time, and we've got a bunch of good kids, and and I think we we got a really good team. And, and when you start the way we started, I think a lot of people kind of pushed us aside and thought this was going to be a down year. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, we saw and and we saw our best competition the other night. And I, I don't think there's anybody on our team that walked away from there thinking that you know we can't go to Youngstown and we can win. No, a- absolutely. Um, I had some questions earlier too. While this is on my mind. Uh, people ask the question about why the Detroit Mercy game is going to be on a Monday night. And that ties in with the IUPUI game in that when you play IUPUI, you have you have a week where you have three games. That's just the way that the schedule works out. IUPUI has played a lot of uh, a lot of Monday night games. Uh, you look at it this week, uh, Purdue, Fort Wayne, and Cleveland State will play each other next next Monday. That is like the uh, the swing week, I guess, I guess you could say, in the, in the schedule. Yes, it really is. And, and here's here's what it is, okay? So this was a, you know, we lost UIC to the Missouri Valley in the middle of last year. So you're thrown, well, we got to have our conference schedule. We can't, you know, you don't have time to really dissect into how we make it fair and how we make it right. So for one year, they put a schedule together and um, they picked a team and it was IUPUI and probably because they were the last team to come into the league. That was what's called the lone wolf. Everybody else has a travel partner and they don't. So on the night that you play your travel partner, you're gonna, the week you play your travel partner, you're going to play them. Well, there has to be, you know, they got to play both of us. So there has to be three nights that week. And 
Uh, you can't make an IUPUI play every Monday. So some, some teams like Fort Wayne and uh, Cleveland State are playing tonight because last week they had you know, IUPUI, on, one on Thursday, one on Saturday tonight. So that's why that is. Uh, I will let everybody know that the, the conference has come up. It's being voted on shortly. Uh, if Steve were here, he could probably give me more clarity on where we're at with it. But next year, that we're going to go away from the travel part. And we're going to see our game days probably change. There will be many Wednesday-Saturday games instead of Thursday-Saturday because one of the things that we as coaches bitch about all the time is it's really difficult with one-day prep. You know, we, we played an unbelievable game against Robert Morris on Thursday, and we had one day to prep for youngsters. They had one day to prep for us too, so it's fair. But it's not. It's it. It's not the like highest quality basketball possible. Yeah, you right. you have two days. That, you know, now we we finished our game at nine o'clock on on Thursday night. We're playing again on three o'clock on Saturday. You know, you you get another twenty four hours in there to help with the conditioning of your legs and things like that. But more importantly, you get another twenty four hours with your players to go over it to get a game plan and go over it and. Uh, I think you'll see higher quality play with that. So I think the league is on board with that. Now there's a couple teams that they are, it's going to be a modified schedule because, you know, financially you can't, and you can't miss class. If you go to green Bay and Milwaukee, you know, you can't go up there on a Tuesday and stay there through Saturday. You just can't miss all that class. So I think when we go up to Wisconsin, it'll be, it will still be Thursday, Saturday, but for the most parts of the schedule, It'll be going Wednesday, Saturday. And then the other great thing that comes out of that is you don't see things like our schedule where we've got four straight on the road. You know, we started, you know, on the road and then four straight here and then, you know, four home games. To, you won't see that. It'll be more away, home, away, home, away, home.